You do not want to mess with this man. Moving his MMA record to 49 wins, 11 losses with no draws, two victories apiece for these badasses and warriors, ready for the heavyweight title and grabbing that strap on and getting it on all night long. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe MMA195, and today we'll be taking a look at some of the most awkward moments in MMA. The UFC Canada press conference disaster. Years ago, the UFC would host a press conference in Canada where they would bring George St. Pierre and Mark Hominick on to speak to the audience on a video call. However, due to technical difficulties, the conference was extremely awkward and ended up being a complete disaster. Thanks a lot, Dana, and thanks to the UFC for including me in today's announcement. Uh, 2011 was a mon. Thanks a lot, Dana, for including me today and the rest of the UFC for this huge event. 2011 was a monumentous, very excited to be a part of it, and I look forward to this year with UFC in, in Canada. Well, that went smooth. <laughs> so, uh, are we ready for our next guest star? Hopefully, hopefully this one will go a little better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, George St. Pierre. Hi. Gilbert Melendez gets interviewed by a clueless reporter. Am I asking your, your goal, goal for the article, or? Um, or are you just, just kind of... I just want to... I just want... I was... During a media tour for UFC 188, UFC lightweight fighter Gilbert Melendez would be interviewed by a clueless reporter who knew absolutely nothing about MMA in one of the most awkward and cringe-worthy MMA interviews of all time. You'll be very surprised, and I think it's a very popular sport around the world. There's going to be a lot of people out there. Mixed sport? Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. The UFC. So... So, MMA fighting is, um... something with the rest of the wearing the masks. Uh, wrestling right in the middle is, is uh, called pro wrestling, lucha libre in Mexico. That's fake, you know, fake wrestling. So is that like, so, so like, I'm ignorant. A female reporter creeps on George St. Pierre. George, I just bought one of your dolls, and the man yelled at me. He said it's not a doll, it's an action figure. So, <laughs> My apologies. What's the most offensive thing you've ever heard of a woman doing to one of your dolls? Because I've got a few. After defeating Jake Shields at UFC 129, George St. Pierre would attend the post-fight press conference, where he encountered a very creepy female reporter who made some inappropriate comments about an action figure of him. Because I've got a few. I, I, actually, actually, you don't mind to come here and show it to me? I've never seen it, if you don't Oh, it's mind. beautiful. I've done things to a George. I can't. That is so funny. I hope you don't play Dar with it. <laughs> wow. Things no. we could do, George. Chuck Liddell's drunken interview. Because it's different than college wrestling. Oh yeah, it's a little different. It's a little louder, a little, a little, a little stressful. You okay, Chuck? Yeah, I'm okay. In 2007, Chuck Liddell would appear on Good Morning Texas for an interview. However, as soon as Liddell began speaking, it was clear that he was drunk, as his speech was slurred and he was unable to put together a coherent sentence. How'd you get started then? I was, I was 12. Yeah? I was in country theater and then, uh, then Deb was in between, the, in between the clips. Right. And I really got interested in the clips and started teaching our books about how oh, well, got me in a cry class. Stefan Bonner calls out Tito Ortiz. I can't wait to be in the cage with Tito. I can't wait to eat his elbows and punches to be covered in blood so I can laugh at him, spit in his face, and kick his ass. At Bellator 123, Stefan Bonner and Tito Ortiz would make an appearance to promote their upcoming fight. The two fighters would end up doing a cringe-worthy WWE-like promo, which ended in a scuffle that seemed very scripted. This guy helped him win many world championships. You might recognize him from being in his corner for all those fights. And all he had to give him in return for thanks 
was nothing. Flushed him down the toilet like a turd. Joe Rogan botches UFC's Fox debut. In 2011, when UFC was debuting on Fox, Joe Rogan would host a live TV segment where he had to introduce some UFC executives and pro fighters. But things turned awkward when Joe Rogan mixed up the names of George St. Pierre and Frankie Edgar. UFC Hall of Famer Chuck Liddell. UFC lightweight champion Frankie Edgar. And UFC welterweight champion George St. Pierre. <laughs> Nate Diaz's profanity laced call out. At UFC on Fox 17, after Nate Diaz would defeat Michael Johnson, Joe Rogan would proceed to interview him. But Diaz would go on a profanity laced tirade, calling out Conor McGregor while live on Fox. This ended in an awkward moment where Joe Rogan had to cut the interview short due to the fact that profanity is not allowed on network TV. Beautiful performance against a very tough guy in Michael Johnson. How do you feel about it? F*** that. Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for, my I'm going to fight your f***ing ass. You know what's the real fight, what's the real money fight is me, not these clowns that you already punked at the press conference. Don't no one want to see that. You know you beat them already. That's an easy fight. You want that real s*** right here. Hey, and I'm not... Unfortunately, you can't talk like that on Fox. The infamous John Jones versus Daniel Cormier face-off. Jones and Cormier had one of the most heated rivalries in the history of MMA, and it all started during a media event where the two would face off for their very first stare-down. When the two fighters came face to face, Jones decided to aggressively place his forehead against Cormier's, to which Cormier responded by shoving Jones. A brawl then ensued as Jones shoved UFC executive Dave Schaller to the ground while trying to attack Cormier. The brawl was quickly broken up, but as the fighters were being pulled away by security, Cormier attempted to get one last shot at Jones as he pulled off his own shoe and threw it across the room. However, the shoe ended up missing Jones and hitting one of the media people in the crowd. Both Jones and Cormier ended up being fined for this incident. The Anderson Silva vs. Chris Weidman weigh-in face-off. During the weigh-in for Silva's first fight with Weidman at UFC 162, the two fighters would come face-to-face -face for an intense stare-down. However, Silva would get a little bit too close to Weidman, causing their lips to be pressed against each other and making this stare down extremely awkward. Two questions. First of all, what is it like to kiss Anderson Silva? Nice lips, nice lips. As awkward as this stare down was, the two were able to laugh it off and even joked about it during the lead up to their rematch at UFC 168. Julian Lane's meltdown on the ultimate fighter. Season 16 of The Ultimate Fighter is regarded by many people as being one of the worst seasons in the show's history. There wasn't many talented fighters, and most of the fights were extremely boring. However, the one saving grace of this season that made it worth watching was the house drama, as a fighter named Julian Lane had frequent violent outbursts throughout the season. Because I'll beat somebody's ass in this house, and I'll get sent home. Well, that's a bad so play, dog, right now. His most infamous outburst happened after he got drunk and attempted to start a brawl with another fighter. When his friends held him back to prevent him from fighting, he began to cry and throw a tantrum as he uttered a phrase that would go down in infamy. Let me bang, man! I want to do that, man. Let me I do let you bang. Hey. Let me bang again, man. I let you bang. I let you bang. Let me bang again. Let me bang. Let me bang. Ben Rothwell's cringeworthy post-fight interview. The only fight that matters to me now is the number one contender spot. I will have the UFC title. You certainly continue. After defeating Matt Mitrione in 2015, Ben Rothwell would have an awkward post-fight interview with John Anik. 
where Rothwell attempted a hilarious WWE-like promo. I will have the UFC title. You certainly continue. I don't have much left to say other than you have seen nothing yet. <laughs> the Heath Herring vs. Yoshihiro Nakao face-off. At K1 Premium 2005 Dynamite, Heath Herring was set to fight Yoshihiro Nakao. When the two would come face to face in the ring, for some odd reason Nakao would decide to kiss Herring on the lips to which Herring would respond by punching Nakao in the face, knocking him out cold before the fight had even begun. <laughs> I didn't touch him, I still didn't try to kiss me on the lip. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. Justin Gagey and Michael Johnson's cringeworthy trash talk. I'm not trying to beat him. I'm not trying to win by a decision or a point. I'm literally going to try to take this man's life. I and want if, to die. And if, and if you're not ready, and if you're not ready to die, don't show up. I am up. ready to Tell die. Tell me right man. now, the shit that's breaking my mind, breaking you in a piece by night, piece, boy. artistically breaking you. I eat my shit whole. I don't take piece by piece. The more you talk, the bigger I'm going to ask you to look. In 2017, Justin Gagey would be making his UFC debut against Michael Johnson. Throughout the build-up to this fight, Johnson talked a lot of trash. However, neither of them are any good at trash talk, and this led to some of the most cringe-worthy verbal exchanges ever. The definition of a oh my god, look at your lip quiver! Oh my, oh my god, look at your lip quiver! The Anderson Silva vs. Luis Azaredo face-off. Now this one goes way back to the year 2000, when Anderson Silva would be competing in only his third MMA fight against a fighter named Luis Azaredo. As the two fighters came face to face in the ring, Silva strangely decided to kiss Azaredo on the lips. But luckily, Azaredo didn't have much of a reaction. Azaredo would go on to win this fight by decision, handing Silva his first defeat in MMA. Andy Wang cries on the Ultimate Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. On the Ultimate Fighter Season 5, a fighter named Andy Wang would lose his first match after abandoning his game plan and attempting to brawl with his opponent. Take him down, Andy! Where's the shot, Andy? Andy, take him down! Go now! Take him down! BJ is screaming, screaming from the corner to take him down. After losing the fight, Wang would break down crying in one of the most cringeworthy moments of the series. Disappointed that I lost, but I don't feel like a loser. Honestly, I feel like people when they see Andy Wang, they don't say, "Oh, he's a punk." He's like, they say, "Hey, man, this is a warrior." <laughs> the Jason Barrett versus Alex Reed weigh-in. During the weigh-in for UCMMA 22, Jason Barrett and Alex Reed faced off for an intense stare-down. It was very clear that these two men disliked one another as they began talking trash while face to face. During this heated confrontation, Reed strangely decided to kiss Barrett, causing Barrett to explode in anger as he attempted to attack Reed while being held back by security. <laughs> Cody Garbrandt gets drunk on the Ultimate Fighter. Hanging with the boys! Good. Good. We're hanging with the boys! On the Ultimate Fighter Season 25, Cody Garbrandt would coach against his former training partner TJ Dillashaw. At one point during the season, Cody would get drunk and party with his team. But this would turn awkward when Cody embarrassed his teammates by repeatedly yelling out, Hanging with the boys! Hanging with the boys! Where's Guida and that sexy Lexi? I want a sexy Lexi. I'm Man, you know it. Hanging with the boys. Hanging with the boys. Good. Good. We're hanging with the boys. Joe Rogan checks out Ronda Rousey. During the weigh-in for UFC 168, where Ronda Rousey would be weighing in for her second fight with Misha Tate, Joe Rogan could clearly be seen behind Rousey, checking her out as she was getting ready to step on the scale. The Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Lee press conference scuffle. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Don't you ever talk about my mom. In 2017, the UFC held a massive summer kickoff press conference for multiple upcoming UFC events. 
During this massive press conference, many of the fighters verbally went to war with each other. This included Michael Chiesa and Kevin Lee, whom almost came to blows after Kevin Lee mentioned Chiesa's mother. I know his mama got tickets, so shut the f up about, hey, don't talk about my mom for one. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Just smack the f out of you right now. Don't you ever talk about my mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's good? The Iwan Kotalaba versus Jonathan Wilson weigh in. During the weigh-in for UFC Fight Night 96, Kutalaba came out painted in green from head to toe like the Incredible Hulk. After weighing in, he would then go on to have an awkward stare-down with his opponent, Jonathan Wilson. Gabe Rudiger's failed weight cut. Mom. So close, bro. Never seen anything like it in my life. A naked guy just lying there. I was just like, is this jackass or the ultimate fighter? <laughs> on season five of The Ultimate Fighter, contestant Gabe Rudiger was set to take on Corey Hill in his first fight. Rudiger had a lot more weight to cut than the other fighters, and he took this very lightly, showing little effort, despite the urging of his coaches and teammates. When Rudiger was sent to the sauna by his coaches, he seemingly pretended to pass out, and eventually quit cutting the weight as he couldn't tough out the rest of the weight cut. Beat Corey! You done? Are you done? And then all of a sudden, he falls off the bike out the glass door. Are you done? B, put me back in. Put me back in. Come on. Oh, yeah. Keep the back in. Don't worry about that. Dodge. Rudiger's fight with Corey Hill was immediately canceled and Dana White promptly kicked Rudiger off the show. You shouldn't be here if you can't make 155 pounds. You blew it. You're out of here. Rampage Jackson destroys a door. On season 10 of The Ultimate Fighter, Scott Junk of Team Rampage would face Matt Mitrione of Team Evans. After a tough back and forth two rounds, Matt Mitrione would come out victorious, winning the fight by majority decision. This angered Rampage as he felt that the fight was too close and should have gone to a third round. Rampage would go on to throw a temper tantrum as he viciously ripped a door apart. Alrighty. You know what sucks about that? It shows everybody how cheap our <laughs> doors are. Conor McGregor vs. Cody Garbrandt on The Ultimate Fighter. On season 22 of The Ultimate Fighter, Conor McGregor would be coaching against Uriah Faber. And in typical McGregor fashion, he talked a lot of trash throughout the season. But things got out of hand when McGregor decided to confront Faber's team about the fact that TJ Dillashaw was disloyal to them. Eventually, Cody Garbrandt had enough of the trash talk as he attempted to fight McGregor. But their teams acted quickly and prevented things from getting out of hand. In the midst of the chaos, David Taymor of Team McGregor would make a very awkward threat to Garbrandt. You'll do nothing, you little twerp, yeah? You'll do <laughs> Take care of your underwears. I gonna you, man. <laughs> Chris Lieben's meltdown. Midway through season one of The Ultimate Fighter, Dana White decided to let the fighters have a night out at the Hard Rock Cafe. After a night of drinking, Chris Lieben and Bobby Southworth would get into an argument where Southworth ended up calling Lieben a fatherless bastard. Don't Bobby, talk to you fatherless no. bastard. Hey. Just oh, shut that's your not cool. mouth. That's not cool, dude. Come on. Call me a... I know what he calls you. Call me a fatherless bastard, dude. This upset Lieben as he began to cry and decided to spend the night sleeping outside. But Bobby Southworth and Josh Koscheck decided to further provoke Lieben by spraying him with a hose while he was asleep. This enraged Lieben as he proceeded to have a meltdown. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe for more MMA content. Brooklyn, put your hands together for none other than Floyd Money Mayweather!